We are environmental and civil engineers working on projects with stringent requirements and a solid scientific base. Dr. Julie Corliss' journal article has been chosen as our featured piece. She is the executive editor of the Harvard Heart Letter, Harvard Health Publishing. We are beginning with papers from Harvard Medical School in response to a specific request from some of our American viewers. She worked as a medical writer and editor for Health News, a consumer newsletter affiliated with the New England Journal of Medicine before enrolling at Harvard. An expert in wilderness medicine describes how to prepare for the heat, humidity, and other hazards that can arise in the great outdoors during warmer months and regions. The best time to go hiking is during the summer, especially if you get to go to one of the many state or national parks in the U.S. However, if you travel a long way from home, it is crucial to be prepared for the local climate and any other circumstances you may encounter along the way, especially if you are a new hiker. Weather extremes or temperatures that are too high for you could be fatal. According to Drive N, Stuart Harris, there are very different lists of considerations if you are taking a walk in the middle of July in the Arizona desert as opposed to if you are in the mountains of Montana or the forests of North Carolina. Head of the Wilderness Medicine Division at Massachusetts General Hospital, a Harvard affiliate. Take the following things into account before beginning your walk. First of all, it is safer to travel in groups or with a partner. However, you should always let someone know where you are going, how you plan to get there, and when you expect to be back. Do so when asked to register, because national parks frequently do so in order to track day hikers and to request reservations or permits for overnight stays or excursions to particular places. The information will make it easier to find you more quickly if you end up hurt or lost. You should pack a map and be mindful of your surroundings. In remote locations where cell service may be patchy or non-existent, use caution when relying on your phone's GPS. In the desert, you might be able to see 50 miles away. According to Dr. Harris, it is much simpler to become disoriented if you are in a hilly, wooded area where you might not be able to see 100 yards in front of you. Be prepared for weather hazards such as heat, humidity, and others. First, check the weather. To be prepared for weather changes, always check the forecast. The temperature may drop and the wind speed may pick up as you ascend higher. If you live in an area where thunderstorms frequently occur, Dr. Harris advises that lightning injury should be high on your radar. These lightning safety recommendations are provided by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. You can reduce your risk by going on a walk earlier in the day because these storms typically develop in the afternoon. Be sure to drink plenty of water. To replace the fluid you lose through perspiration, be sure to drink more water during any type of exercise, especially trekking, which frequently requires a lot of effort. If the weather is warm and windy, you might not even be aware that you are perspiring. Pay attention to any warnings or signs that outline the recommended water amount for hikers. Think about the humidity. But there are other things that need to be considered as well. According to Dr. Harris, your body may be better able to release heat through sweating if it is over 100 degrees in Arizona as opposed to a location with a lot of humidity. It may only reach the high 80s in July in the Great Smoky Mountains, for instance. However, there is frequently at least 75% humidity. As a result of perspiration evaporating more slowly, your body's natural cooling system will not work as efficiently. 
Take a break and sip some water if you start to get warm. What should I pack and wear? Before visiting the park, look up any specific safety recommendations based on the potential terrain and weather conditions there. Here are five foundational considerations. When hiking through rough or uneven terrain, hiking boots offer more support than tennis shoes. Lightweight, moisture-wicking clothing will keep you more comfortable, but if the weather forecast calls for it, bring extra layers and rain gear. If you intend to spend some time outside after the sun goes down, make sure you are prepared by dressing in layers. Bring water and high-energy snacks with you. If you get off course or into trouble, you will be glad you took that precaution. To shield your eyes from the sun's glare, put on a wide-brimmed hat and some sunglasses. Additionally, remember to apply sunscreen to any exposed skin before going outside. Moreover, depending on where you hike, you might need to stay away from plants like stinging nettles, poison oak, or poison ivy that can cause rashes. Be sure to carry insect repellent to fend off biting insects and take precautions against ticks, which may carry bacteria that cause Lyme disease and other infections. Keep a first aid kit on hand at all times, including bandages for cuts and scrapes and moleskin for blisters. Finally, a disclaimer, a copyright statement, and an ethics statement these viewpoints may not be shared by Consumer Trading Organization Limited. The Harvard Medical Schools, Harvard Health Publishing, articles are available online and are the author's copyright.